Right, welcome back, everyone. Hey. Hey. We, we collectively are the Ubuntu podcast. Uh, this is Alan. Hello. Uh, I'm Martin. And this is Mark. Hello. So as is customary, uh, who of you here have listened to the Ubuntu podcast before? Good answer. Oh, look at Good this. Good answer. Okay, and how many of you have been to Foss Talk Live? This is your first time. If it's your first time, <laughs> put your hands up. Oh, wow, lots of new people. Okay. Okay. We're All right, sorry. then. So you're going to be disappointed when you see what we do. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do, do we need to ex explain about that that lot over there? We'll get to that. We'll we get will. To that. Oh, it's me now, is it? Yes, okay. it's your bit. Right. Okay. Well, we, we'd like to ask you to to take photos and stuff and videos and whatever you like of us while we're on stage. Um, please post them online uh, and tag us with the Foss Talk hashtag and at Ubuntu Podcast on uh, on Twitter and on Mastodon if you like. Um, Hands up. Who uses a Mastodon account? Actively, that's about three. Okay, um, okay. good, good, also, good. Also, I'll be watching your accounts for photos. Also, please send them to us on ubuntupodcast.org slash telegram, which is our telegram channel. Um, we'd like a new Twitter banner and avatar and things like that. So it'd be nice to have some decent photos of us. And this will probably, maybe, go out on our podcast feed. And as such, we want it to sound as engaging and good as possible. Huh. So what we need to do is to insert some applause at various points in the show so that it sounds really good. Right, so, yes, if we could get a... No, 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 no. We're not that good. We don't cheer, just applause. Like, so... Right. That'll do. Can we delete Joe? Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> one of the things we like to do also is uh, when we're recording, we like to get all the audio files in sync. And the way we do that is count to three, and then we all say the word biscuits in like traditional British manner, like you do, in order to synchronize all the audio files for the lovely people, Joe and Drew, who actually edit the show. Thank you very much, Jupiter Broadcasting and Linux Academy. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, not too much. Uh, and um, <laughs> so what I'd like to do is count you in, and then after three, I'd like you to all say biscuits. Okay, ready? So, one, two, three. Biscuits. biscuits. Brilliant. And also, that means you all get biscuits. So... <laughs> While, while I tell you what other nonsense is happening, this is a somewhat unconventional version of the Ubuntu podcast. Normally we cover news, community news, events, and so on. None of this is going in, is it? Nobody's hearing this. It's all about the biscuits right now. <laughs> so, let me just explain uh, while you're eating, uh, eat quietly, uh, <laughs> what's going to happen. Uh, we like to plan these shows in advance. I apologize profusely. Normally we have a laminated set of notes, but my wife took the laminator back to school, annoyingly, so I couldn't laminate the show notes of Destiny. So apologies for the paper. Just to clarify, Alan's wife works at a school. She's not still at school. <laughs> Thank you for that clarification. <laughs> so what we did, we decided to start planning this show in December last year. And uh, what we wanted to do was develop something. I think I came up with a remit to make something. You and did. I think we thought making hardware is too hard, too intensive. Let's make software, right? So we'll make some software and present it here. But then I realized I am at a disadvantage because these two people are software developers and I am not. And I don't even play one on TV either. So, <laughs> so I was at a disadvantage. So what we had to do was scale it back so it would be at my level and they would have to develop at my level, right? So we decided to write a game each and then present it here to all of you. But <laughs> the game has to be entirely written in Bash. So... <laughs> <laughs> because that's my level, right? <laughs> and, and so what I would like to do is allow us to each take a short moment of time to, to talk about our projects and demonstrate our products, projects. And then afterwards, you will get the opportunity to vote on which one you prefer in a non-binding referendum, um, <laughs> which <laughs> I would, we may or may not take on board. And if you could pass those to the front. I'll pass them out a little bit later and you can pass them to the front. The key thing to note, though, that Martin is itching for me to say is we don't actually know what each other did. 
Like, honestly, I have no clue what Martin's done, and Martin has no clue what Mark's done, and same the other way around, right? So this is going to be as much of a surprise to us <laughs> as it is to all of you. Uh, so first up, it's me. Is there, have I missed anything? It's Mark. No, I, no, I no. think that just about covers it. Sweet. So good to go. I will hand you over to Mark with something. <laughs> Don't applaud yet. <laughs> You'll regret it. Okay, so Alan is going to bring up uh, something on the screen for me to talk through briefly my slides, if you could. Uh, I'm waiting for that to scan through HDMI ports. Oh, right, lovely. Okay, talk amongst yourselves, not too loudly. Uh, here we go. We have uh, a lovely Windows 3.1 timer on the screen there, and we have a, a KDE desktop, so hopefully that means that you can see uh, some slides in a moment. And there we go. Right, I'd like to introduce you to my game. It's called... Uh, the massively zero-player online role-playing game, or Mzorpig. Um, so I'll talk a bit through what the hell I mean by that. So next slide, please, Alan. Right, so what do I mean by zero-player? Well, a zero-player game is a game where you create the initial state of the game, and then the game does the rest for you. There are some prior art in this area. You might be familiar with Conway's Game of Life. It's a cellular uh, automation game where you basically you pick some cells that are live at the beginning and then you click go and based on algorithm it makes things happen um, and people have done some quite clever things with it. There's also another game called Progress Quest which is more like my game. Um, you could say my game is more like Progress Quest where basically you create a character and rather than actually having to play the role playing game and fight monsters and collect loot and sell it, it just kind of does all that for you and you just sit back and watch while you crank, crank through the levels and the story. Um, so that's the kind of thing that I went for with my game. Next slide, please. But I said it was massively zero player. So if, you, if there's no players, how can it be massively zero player? Well, the way it works is that each player creates a character when they run the game. Um, but if lots of people are playing on the same machine, then their characters will meet up and fight each other. So that means that you could have a server running this game and everyone's running it together and... Um, We'll see in a minute exactly how that manifests. But basically, at some point in the game, your character is going to search for other characters who are playing on the same server and fight them. Uh, next slide, Alan. Demo. OK, right. If you could switch to the, switch to the terminal. Yeah, OK. We'll just, uh, we'll just wait for a moment while Alan gets that sorted. OK, so uh, can you make that bigger at all? Is that possible? Zoom in. Yes, there we go. Right, so uh, yeah, if you just hit Enter. Right, so here we go. Uh, we've got a character who's been generated for us. We can either accept it or re-roll. So, Alan, if you could press R to re-roll a few times, so you can see it's just generating us some stats. Um, there's three stats here, vitality, agility, and dexterity. Vitality is how much health you've got. Dexterity is related to your chance to hit someone. Agility, I thought at the beginning of the game that this was going to have some really complex battle logic, but actually it's really simple. Agility isn't used, so it's just always 25. <laughs> Um, so, right, Alan, if you press uh, Y to accept the current stats, we'll see what happens. Right, so we're finding a monster. We found a monster, and we're going to fight it. Here we go. Uh, so what, what it's doing here is basically every turn, it's rolling a number, seeing if that hit or not, and then attacking the monster. Oh, wait, we've, we've, we're now leveling up, so we're going to find someone else to fight, which allows us to level up. Uh, now, you'll notice... No, you probably won't notice, because you can't see it. Um, but we've, we've got another... Uh, we've got six other players who are all playing this at the same time as Alan. If you could press F4 and F3 to sort of switch between tabs. Oh, that was terrible. Switch back, switch back. <laughs> there, okay. So, but what you saw there is another one of these displays. So what's happening is another player uh, is, is having a fight with us at the moment. Um, and the way that this is actually working is that whoever is the aggressor um, based on some sort of algorithm in the background, is running the entire fight and then sending this display to the defender um, so that they can see the same display, but it's flipped up. Um, so the way that the whole progression works is um, you each time you fight a monster, you get one to your experience score. And once your experience score is the triangle of your level, so that means at level one, it's got to be one, at level two, it's got to be three, um, and so on. Um, I can't be able to work out triangular numbers in my head. Um, <laughs> then you have to fight someone else at the same level before you can advance to the next level. Um, so now we're going to fight two monsters and then we're going to search for someone else. And I think I've set up a slightly contrived example here so that you can get up to level six and then you have to fight uh, a character who is impossible to beat. 
Uh, but this is the general gist of it. You'll see, you could, you could imagine that you could just leave this running and you would be grinding away at monsters and leveling up and fighting other people uh, until the cows come home. Uh, so, Alan, if you could switch back to my, um, my slides. Uh, yep, yeah, next one. Okay, so some things I learned. Uh, I've actually, I'm, I'm going to talk about something that's not on here first. So the way that the, uh, the, way that the battling between characters works is uh, I discovered that you can set up something called a named pipe. What this basically is, is somewhere on the file system where one bash script can write to it and another one instantly gets that message. Um, so that's how sending the, uh, sending the battles in between the two works. One generates what's going to happen in the battle. It then displays its version of it on the screen and displays the reverse version by sending it through the pipe. And the other character listens for that and then displays it on the screen. Um, you'll notice that it all displayed in some sort of um, text mode window kind of interface, the way that you normally do this in an actual programming language um, <laughs> is, is with a toolkit called NCurses, which has a whole suite of things for doing like quote unquote windows in a terminal window. However, there's no way of doing that. There's no NCurses bindings in bash. Um, so there's another tool called dialogue, um, which lets you say, you know, I'll display a message window and then it just displays that and that's it. Um, and that worked quite well in my sort of early versions, but it turns out that doesn't play nicely if you try and do it over Telnet. The way that you do coloring of text and blocks, which is how I do those, pro uh, those health bars, um, the escaping there is completely not understood by Telnet and it doesn't work at all. The reason that's important will come up in a minute. Um, another thing, uh, the, the characters are actually stored in an SQLite database, including the name of the character, which you enter yourself. Now, it occurred to me that when I showed this to people, the first thing they would do is call themselves drop table characters. <laughs> so I had to find out how you prevent SQL injection in Bash. It turns out you do it like this. I have literally no idea what that means, but it works. Uh, and the other cool thing I learned was this command t put cup. Um, I, not, again, I don't know why it's called that. But basically, this lets you move rather than um, just basically writing to the bottom of the screen. And if you want to refresh the screen, you in, output a whole screen's worth of characters. What you can do with t put cup is move the cursor somewhere where you've already put out something and then start outputting, and it overwrites what's already on the screen. So again, that's how everything updates on the screen. Um, there's like four lines of text which change and all it does is go to the start of those four lines of text and then output four lines and that updates enough that it tricks you that everything's updating. Uh, and that's about it, Alan. But I said this was a massively zero player online RPG, didn't I? Yes, I did. Um, <laughs> so because this is a text mode game, you can basically play it over any console. So um, I, I've played uh, a game that some of you might be familiar with called NetHack before, which is also a text mode game. And they have some servers set up where you can tell Net to a server and you can play NetHack online on this server and other people can watch you and you have a, like a high score table. Uh, and this is managed with uh, a separate piece of software called DGame Launch. And I looked into it and I worked out that I could actually wrap my game in DGame Launch and then you could play my game on this server, and if lots of people are playing it together, they get to fight each other. So if you tell that to mzorpg.baronfrozenwasteland.com, you can register a character, log in, and, uh, and play for as much or as little as you like. Um, and that's about it. <laughs> right, chaps. <laughs> uh, right, so are we swapping? Yep. Right, good. Uh, I'll give you that. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name's Alan, and I'm not a developer. So I'm <laughs> fully expecting, having now seen Marks, I promise I haven't seen any of these before, uh, I am definitely going to lose this. So. Uh, my game is called Word Shell, and the incorrect capitalization will become clear in just a moment. Uh, next slide, please. In my house, there are many gaming devices. Uh, Switch, DS, Steam Link, the uh, 
thing over there, this, that thing. There's lots of these things. And I play with lots of these. And my two children play with lots of these. And my wife says, I'm not playing with those because I don't play computer games. Next slide. My wife is a liar. <laughs> she does play computer games. She just doesn't play on any of those devices. She plays on this thing, which she's got in her hand all the time. And in fact, she plays more hours of gaming than most of the rest of us in the family. And the game that she plays is this. It's called Wordscapes. Now, Wordscapes is a, a word game where you are presented with a number of letters down the bottom of the screen and a crossword up here. And you have to try and fill in the words by just like swiping around madly down here. And those words get inserted into the crossword. And once you get a certain number of words, that's the level done and you go to the next level. Uh, next slide. Don't install it, it's crack, right? You, if you install this, you will not be able to put it down, right? So this was my inspiration. I wanted something that was like crack, but... <laughs> Next slide. I am working with this, not an iPhone with accelerated GPU and all that kind of stuff. I've got a terminal. So I came up with Word Shell, you see? Wordscapes, Word Shell. Yeah, you see, this, <laughs> this, <laughs> oh God, it took five minutes to come up with that. So uh, this is my game, Wordshell. I wrote it in Bash, and uh, I think we can possibly show you a demo if you alt tab to a terminal. Um, and uh, if you make that a bit bigger, is that in the right place? Yeah, control plus, and then do, uh, oh, that might be too big. Uh, do dot slash WS. Word shell. Now, I have used all the magic characters that I can using the command toilet dash dash gay to give me the menu at the top. <laughs> and <laughs> many, <laughs> not even kidding, that is what it is. And <laughs> some other unreadable fonts. I showed this to my wife and said, what do you think of this? And she, <laughs> and she said, that is unreadable. If I had dyslexia, I would not be able to read that. And I'm like, look, you don't understand. I'm going to just project this on a wall. It doesn't matter if they can read it. Yeah, but <laughs> dyslexics in schools would not be able to. Oh, anyway, so uh, instructions. If you could please press I and then enter, Mark. Here are the instructions. Awesome. It's a simple word game. Each round, the computer will present a jumbled word. You basically just have to guess the word and any other words that you get along the way, right? That's it. Think fast. Don't get stuck in word hell. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, press enter. Uh, let's start. Press S to start. Ooh, here's our first word. We're at level one, score zero. You found zero of two words. Right, you're playing the game. Muzzle. <laughs> Muzzle. Muzzle? Go for it. Press enter. No. <laughs> Correct, well done. Right, what other words are there in there? Mule. Oh, mule. Yes, well done. Uh, now, there's a slight bug in my code because, <laughs> as I have mentioned previously, I'm not a developer. If you just press enter, Mark. Oh, you're on the next level. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, no, this, uh, so this is another feature of the game. Um, one of the things you could do in the iPhone version is there's a shuffle button because sometimes you get, you could see words better if you, if you just press, uh, uh, if you shuffle the letters. So just pressing enter, if you keep pressing enter, it will just shuffle these letters at the top to maybe give you some ideas of what additional words are. Is there really, those are the only two words? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that, that's another one. Emu, try emu. Oh, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> These, that's the target number you've got to find. These are bonus words. <laughs> got away with that one. <laughs> well, press enter, Mark. Oh, now we've got up to the end of that level. It's time for a new word. So now we've got a new word. Can anyone think of some words? Quick, shout them out and Mark can... Riggers, is it? You need some more words than that. You've got to get to a couple more. Rig, yes, try rig. Rigs, yes, that's valid. <coughs> now you'll notice the score here 
This is determined partly by how long the word is and also how many nanoseconds it takes you between <laughs> that prompt appearing and you pressing enter. So the faster you do it, the, uh, the more points you get. Uh, what? Sir? Yeah, try that, Mark. Sir. We can sit here all night. There are 1,000 levels in this game. <laughs> 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 and those are only the six letter words. We can go up to the seven letter words a bit later. So um, as part of testing this thing, uh, I added a couple of uh, little uh, back doors in here. So there's a couple of hidden commands. If you do asterisk skip, boom, it takes you to the next level. Don't tell anyone that back door is there. <laughs> <laughs> I deliberated long and hard about, le about leaving this one in there, but yeah, well done. Uh, <laughs> you can also quit the game with asterisk quit, and that will, uh, that's not an asterisk. Uh, quit. Boom. Thanks for playing Word Hell. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, oh, this one's not on. Can we have this one on? Okay, uh, I also wrote a game in Bash. <laughs> my Bash, my Bash game is called Antsy Alien Attack. Uh, the alliteration was my daughter's idea, and the play on words was my wife's idea. And as you can see this evening, this is the first triple A game entry in the competition. <laughs> <laughs> Next slide, please. Right, the plot. The year is 2138. Arbitrary date in the future sets the scene. It's an 80s game trope. Next slide, please. The plot thickens. <laughs> Planet Earth is obviously under attack by aliens, and they're antsy. <laughs> yes, this is your classic Earth versus aliens with no backstory as to why the aliens are, in fact, attacking Earth. Next slide, please. Uh, you're a mercenary, but of course you are. Tick with a state-of-the-art spaceship, tick, and um, a gun for hire. So, next, next slide, please. So these are the game mechanics. Uh, you earn money for each alien that you destroy. Yet there are financial penalties for the aliens that escape. Efficient loot use of lasers is rewarded, and you can collect power-ups to enhance your ship and earn bonuses. And uh, the basic premise is you just kill everything that, that, that you can. So, if the demo gods are smiling, can you switch to the, uh, just move on a slide first. It should, should yeah, okay. So, um, from my plot and uh, the ships that you saw, the player ships, um, shoot em up aficionados may be thinking this is somewhat similar to Raiden which is a 1990s coin-op game. And uh, I, I did use it as, as inspiration. So the question is, did I make Raiden in the shell? Maybe. Uh, the, the command is um, uh, it's just aaa.sh in, in that terminal. Yeah, and we may need to dim the light slightly, I think, because, yeah, .sh. And <laughs> and is is audio possible? No. Okay. Well, if uh... so, um, yes, uh, I have implemented a classic demo scene uh, <laughs> uh, 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 trope there, and there are two members of the Cryogenics uh, demo group in the audience, and. Uh, I am banking on your vote for doing this alone. <laughs> so, uh, I'm also holding a Steam controller. Uh, I implemented uh, Xbox 360 and Steam controller support in my Bash game. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, I also have instructions, as you can see just here. And uh, these, these screens are also made with uh, Toilet and Lolcat. <laughs> so, um, let's see if it works.
So I've just picked the power up. Oh, there we go. Now, this happens, unfortunately, and I'll explain why. I actually, if you just, if you just run the save command again, the reason that happens is that I'm throwing so many keyboard inputs from the controller to the read command, occasionally read seg faults. Um, but we'll ignore that and carry on and hope it doesn't happen again. My game doesn't mind read seg faults. So uh, this is shields and I will flash now so I can animate my sprites. Um, You'll notice the explosions, uh, hopefully. Uh, and Stuart, those green, those green lasers. There we go. That's what you explained. There's bonus points. Uh, you'll notice the star field in the background as well. Oh, they got me. More shields. More shields. Now, if I can just kill a few, if I can kill a few more of these. Uh, <laughs> There we go, boss ship. <laughs> and um, there's my stats for the end of level. There are five five levels like this, five five boss ships. Uh, there's a management structure to the boss ships because there's performance, performance related pay in the game. There we go. We'll uh, we'll stop that there. If you can, um, if you run the game again and then just uh, Control C to quit. Yeah, okay, you're good. If you bring the slides back up, thanks. <laughs> it would be there's there's a reason why it's not. It requires an interface called Process Control, which has to have store review. If I'd have uploaded it, Alan would have found out about it. So I... <laughs> Willie, right, OK, so if you can... Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, if you can move on. OK, so that was an introduction to the game. So uh, next slide. Um, so the game engine uh, uses a hardware interrupt trap and user signals uh, for the game loop, and it all runs in a subshell. Um, it's a 256 ANSI color frame buffer, um, which does fast delta updates, so it only writes to the areas of the screen it needs to. And I've basically implemented a blitter uh, algorithm that moves one array to another array really, really quickly. Um, so it's an ANSI sprite engine with collision detection, overlays, animators, keyframing, and a whole, a whole bunch of other stuff. As, as you heard, multi-threaded uh, sound engine with, uh, <laughs> with sound chaining, um, uh, Xbox 360 and Steam Control support, even with the limitations of read. Uh, and also, uh, in fact, you want to go back to the game a second. I can't demonstrate this very well. But simultaneous multi two player multiplayer. So my daughter and I actually play this together with uh, a Steam controller each. Okay, you can control C to kill it. <clears throat> um, AI yeah, has stateful configurations. So you can turn the sound effects on and off, the music on and off, configure controller, and it remembers all that stuff and high score. And this is what I learned. To make something like that work in Shell, you have to optimize the Jesus out of it. Case is two times faster than if, then else. Um, ANSI is harder than you think. Um, echo minus E is faster than T put mark, and T put is uh, faster than print F. Um, arithmetic T put was fast enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> arithmetic comparisons are fast, so uh, the, uh, the arithmetic comparison there is faster than the test based comparison. And I found out Bash has C style loops, which is really handy because now you get an incrementer in your loop and you don't have to do that separately. And I didn't know about these additions. And this font is the PX437. It's the original uh, IBM PC BIOS font. And uh, the whole game is optimized for code page 437. <laughs> that was my game. So if you just go to the last slide, um, you can get the code from there. It's on GitHub. Um, and uh, last slide. Thank you very much. I'd like to invite my, uh, my colleagues back up to the stage. So apparently we're going to vote. <laughs> now, we could save some time. Um, uh, 
And I actually made up these uh, rather amusing uh, voting cards. So you can have a souvenir voting card. If you could take one and pass it around the audience, that would be super useful. Sorry, can I just butt in at this point? Um, I think before we vote, we need to know how long it took you all. Because... Uh, hang on, hang on. That, this is all factored in. Don't all right, worry. sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Edit that out, Drew. <laughs> uh, also, in this box is a whole bunch of pens and a few stickers. So if you'd like to make your vote while we discuss how long it took us to make our games and other interesting points. <laughs> uh, so, Mark, uh, how long, how much effort did you put into this game? Uh, I probably spent about a fortnight's worth of evenings, I would say. Wow. And uh, what, what was, did you, did you have any particular stumbling blocks or was this just outputting stuff to the screen? Not really hard. You didn't have to have event loops and code pages and... and uh... I didn't. I, I had to... So so I had a bit of trouble working out um, the when I was reading up on how to do the named pipes, do inter-process communication, the way that it suggested that you do it was by using so the, the trouble is as you're reading out of it if you're trying then trying to send messages back you need to make sure that you're not sending more than you're reading so uh, there were i tried to create two pipes and use one as like a timer where i could just write something to it and then you know that you're good to good to go but that didn't really work so that's when i just said well i'll have one person run the whole thing and then send everything else through the pipe oh like a client server kind of thing effectively. yeah right yeah and the the other thing i well when i thought when i first thought of this i thought like it would be really cool to get it set up with the game launch so you could play it over telnet because that i don't know for some reason that that <laughs> excited me um but it's really really badly documented so i just jumped into the the nesh hack I, net hack irc channel and just said oh does anyone know how d game launch works and someone responded saying well this guy runs the afraid.org net hack server and this guy wrote d game launch uh so i just sort of chatted to them for a bit and and Did now, they wonder why someone in 2019 was asking these questions actually they they were just fairly laid back about it all. <laughs> awesome. um, but but the so the way that d game launch works is it creates a ch root uh -huh. And so everyone who net who telnets in is in the CH route, which means you have to have everything that your uh, your program is going to need in the CH route. Which in the case of NetHack, everything is just kind of compiled into NetHack, so it's fine. Right. However, in the case of my thing, you have to have Bash in your CH route and SQL Lite in your CH route and the various other commands and libraries for all of those commands. So that was a bit of fun working out how to get all that to happen. Mm. So more the infrastructure was the challenging yes. problem. Yes. To solve and I think that. I ended up with probably about. 250 lines of actual bash. My question for Martin, um, <laughs> you're a dark horse, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> uh, well done. <laughs> well done. Uh, I, I was super impressed that you actually got something animated on the screen. At what point did you decide, I'm not going to do a stupid puzzle game that outputs toilet dash dash gay. I am going to do a fully <laughs> animated 80s retro style shoot 'em up. Right at the very beginning. Right. <laughs> okay. I was like, if we're, if we're going to do this, what's the most ridiculous thing you, you, you can take on? And I thought, you know, a bullet hell shoot 'em up was probably up there. And at what point, like, so as a reminder, we didn't know what each other was doing, <laughs> as is patently clear by my surprise. Um, we started this in December. December the 19th. How, how long after <laughs> that did you have a working... I, like, things moving on screen and stuff? Uh, I, I had stuff working within a couple of days, uh, like right. over the Christmas holidays, just fiddling around with stuff. Mm -hmm. And I had a ship that you could move around and it could fire lasers and, that was, and it had the star field. And right. that was kind of it. And similarly... When, at what point did you do the most recent commit on that code base before we saw it? Last night. Last night. What was the last most recent commit you did? Uh, to the actual game was two days ago, but to the D game launch bit was last night. Okay. Yeah. I, I did the scoring mechanic on the train on the way here. <laughs> <laughs> Will you win that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If there was a poll for that. So how long? How long did you spend on yours? Not as much time as you guys, it seems. Uh, no, I. I think once I the the thing that took me more time was actually generating the word lists because yeah. I oh, I use right. user share dict to get a bunch of words yeah. and then figure out what all the words that are inside those words are yeah. and I did that all in a whole bunch of rubbish loops inside bash which I probably could have made faster <laughs> but <laughs> But so, then I spat them all out as files. So, it, so if that's you pre-generated. Yeah, I pre-generated. Because yeah. at the time, I was doing it at runtime. 
and then realized that's incredibly slow. So then I pre-generated them. So if you look in that directory, there's just a giant list of files with all the anagram, the, the mini words that are inside the big word. Mm. Um, but it does mean it's fast to run. Yeah, <laughs> I, I found it quite interesting, Martin, that you were talking about all the optimizations you did because mine actually has a, a variable right at the top of the file called speed, which slows everything <laughs> down so, so that you can it's, see what's actually meant to be happening. A, it's a really weird dichotomy because I have to do two things. I have to slow it all down but then I have to make everything that it does really, really, really fast. Because if you just run it without any delays at all, it just goes... I, I had a similar problem finished. in that when I was <clears throat> doing my uh, uh, generation of all these words, I, I was getting some logic bugs. So I did what everyone does, and I output stuff to a log file at each yep. function yep. Uh, so that I could trace where the program is going. And then I found actually writing out the log file made the program 10 times slower. So, right. it was, <laughs> so, so I stripped out all the logging completely. In order to keep this running at a consistent pace, I, app, I implemented a frame counter into the game. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so the game runs at about um, 57 frames a second. I was aiming for about 60. Is that on your... Uh, no, on anything, Vega. on anything, as you can see. Um, but actually, GPU accelerated. Adding, adding the frame counter diminished the performance quite considerably. So some of those optimizations I was showing was actually to make the frame counter not impact the performance of the game. Nice. Nice. Um, could we collect up the uh, the polling cards? I think someone needs to act as the returning officer with uh, these. Joe, thank you for collecting yeah. these. And uh, um, Any other questions, comments? Well, I'm, I'm interested. How many lines of code did you write? Oh, God, I don't know. Oh, well, I... I, I, the code that I wrote obviously has the anagram generator in it, which I can basically throw away now. Right. So it's probably, I don't know, 400 lines of code with a lot of logging and comments and why does this not work in mm -hmm. it and stuff. So a lot okay. of mine is actually the, uh, the sort of graphical toolkit for displaying and updating that window that you see on the screen because right. I had to essentially re-implement re a bunch of dialogue that I needed, yes. Right. Um, but that probably, yeah, so my, yeah, as I said, mine's about 250 lines of bash. Martin, right. how about you? Um, about 3,000 lines of bash. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you keep yours all in one file or no. did you split it out into no, modules? I, I broke it up into the graphics engine, the sound engine, the music engine, oh, oh, the threat oh, manager. Actually, a feature I added recently <laughs> um, was it saves state. It saves state in a directory so that you can carry on playing later. If yeah. you kill the game yeah. and restart later, you, you get to carry on. So I got that bit. Mike does that. He just does it in an SQL-like database. I was interested in what you were talking about with named pipes because one of the things I wanted to implement that I didn't get time to do was the two-player but over the network. Yeah. Uh, so I was going to use Netcat to just jam the frame buffer at the remote player and accept their key presses into the driving game. But I like your idea of name pipes, because although that would only run locally, of yes. course. So that's, yeah, OK. Yeah. And another, so, one, another thing, where, where were you host? Did you chuck it in, like, GitHub, GitLab? Where, where were you keeping? Uh, so I've been, I've had mine on a site called Source Hut, which is like a, well, it, it lets you have free private Git repositories. I'll probably now move it to something public. I just wanted it to have, <laughs> I wanted to have it backed up somewhere online, just in right. case my laptop exploded. Right. So I, um, I started mine on a private Bitbucket instance, and mm -hmm. then due to the Microsoft acquisition of GitHub, they made private uh, Git repositories available. So I right. migrated it there and then made it public last night. I, I'm using GitLab private, um, and I'm not sure I will make the source code available. <laughs> <laughs> my, my Telnet server is running on a digital ocean droplet. <laughs> so do we have a, 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 a uh, does the returning officer have a count of, uh, is that my vote? That's what? <sighs> Let's go WTO. Okay. <laughs> nice. Well done. So, uh, lots and lots and lots of votes there for someone. It so, looks. Two, uh, give me a mic. So, we have uh, two votes for Mark. Woo well done, Mark. <laughs> Four votes. For Popey. Get him. Well done. Word shell. And 11T for Wimpress. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, and Thank good you. night. Thank you very much. Done. Yeah. Go and get some beer while we clear up the mess. <laughs>